Hey everyone, this is Helena Hart and today I'm so excited to bring Chelsea Rose back on my channel for a live stream. My very good friend and fellow coach. Welcome Chelsea. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me again. Yes, I'm so excited for this topic. For everyone watching, say hi. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know if you can hear us and see us okay. And we're just going to jump right in. For those of you who aren't familiar with Chelsea, she is a success coach for women who offers a pleasure-based approach for helping them attract all of their desires, not just in their love life, but in all areas of their life, including business and lifestyle. And she's just the perfect person to bring on and talk about this topic today. I've been getting so many questions, Chelsea. I don't know if you get this same questions uh, from your audience, but I've been hearing a lot of misconceptions about what it means to lean back and what it means to be in your feminine energy. There are certainly ways to do it that are, you know, not quite right. Well, you know, people <laughs> think, I know a lot of times women think they're leaning back. They think they're in their feminine energy, but they're actually not. They're actually very much leaning forward mentally or emotionally by strategizing or constantly thinking about a man, even when he's not right in front of her. So we're going to start out by saying, oh, hey, to everyone watching. Thank you so much. We're so excited. If you guys have questions for us, put them in the chat. We'll get to as many as we can at the end. And we're going to kind of start with the wrong ways to lean back. You know, the wrong, and we don't want to say you're making a mistake or you're doing something wrong, but if you can kind of get this functioning the way it's supposed to, you're just going to have so much more ease and flow in your life. And it's just becomes like second nature. You won't have to think about it. Am I leaning forward? Am I leaning back? It just <sighs> becomes completely natural. At least that's been my experience, Chelsea. I'd love to hear your experience with this. Totally. I think once you really understand what we're going to break down, it it isn't that hard to lean back. You know, it's only when we're coming from a wounded energy or a fearful space, which I think all leads back to our core wounds, right? It's only when we're being um, inauthentic that it becomes really difficult. And so that's, you know, that's my intention for being here is to help you guys get into that authentic state of alignment that is naturally magnetic. In other words, that's naturally leaned back. Love that. Now it's just an organic, you're organically led to make the best possible decision for yourself, whether in your love life or in business in any area, rather than, you know, being up in your head, trying to strategically plan out your next move, right? It's more yeah. of a pulling the whole world towards you with your feminine magnetism, right? And speaking yeah. of that, before we get started, Chelsea and I are so excited. We're mentioning this for the very first time on this live stream. We're doing a brand new training together, just the two of us. I'm going to be a guest speaker speaker on it and it's called Magnetic Mastery and we're actually offering it at 50% off for the early enrollment uh, discount. So the, yeah. it's, that's the first link in the description. It's also in the comments. Anything you want to say about Magnetic Mastery before we get started? Oh my God, I'm just so excited about this. We've been talking about this for a long time and mm -hmm. it's finally here. We've poured so much love and intention into this um, for you guys. And, um, you know, I it's really that core principle that you are naturally magnetic. And so attracting the love you want, the life you want, the success you want is actually meant to be easy for you. And it's not meant to be a struggle. It's not meant to be um, something you have to try really hard at. And so what I'm so excited to offer you guys or us together is to simplify this process so you really understand how to get into that alignment because that's what it is. Again, it's your true nature to be magnetic. And so it's just my joy and my honor to teach this work in the world because I often get the feedback that like women have, you know, done so many hours of trying to figure this stuff out. And then they have one conversation with me or they watch one video and they're like, oh my God, you make it so practical. And that's why I resonate so much with you too, Helena. I feel like you make this so tangible, practical, embodied. And so I'm just so excited for everyone Love to check that. it out and join Oh my us. gosh. Yeah. Yes. For anyone who's ever done, you know, maybe a, a free call or gotten some coaching with Chelsea, let us know in the chat. Hey. I think I see some big <laughs> Chelsea fans here live. So I'm Yay. super excited. I love you um, guys. <laughs> and I would love to start with, and by the way, yeah, if you guys are, yeah, if you're interested in Magnetic Mastery, uh, click the first link below and, and join while it's still being offered at half off. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be starting um, in just a couple of weeks. So yeah. yeah, let's jump in. We have about a hundred people watching first four Hi. and a half minutes. I'm so excited. And awesome. um, yeah, let's, let's get started with maybe some of the common mm -hmm. misconceptions or some ways that you see women trying to lean back that, that's just not yeah. working and they end up kind of working against <laughs> themselves actually. Yes. I'm so excited. So the first one that I have is, you know, leaning back is a form of allowing. Yes, but it's not about allowing anything. So a common misconception is that 
women need to be passive, like mm -hmm. in every single way when it comes to dating or when it comes to being in a relationship with a man, um, a masculine energy man, it's it that's that's kind of an oversimplification because what that does is by not having, you know, a preference or not having standards, you're going to potentially attract a man who doesn't want to know your preference, <laughs> who doesn't want to know your standards. And so um it's really important for you, I think, you know, before you go out to attract the love you want, you know, or create the kind of relationship you want with your current partner to just sit back and get clear on what are my standards for this relationship mm -hmm. or what, what are my standards around dating? And it's really an internal boundary and commitment you make with yourself. And then that is what, um, you know, that's what you become magnetic toward or for, you know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. That's what you become magnetic to is whatever you've set your standards in. And so when you skip that step and you think that leaning back is just rolling with the punches and going with the flow fully, um, you can really attract some weird stuff um, because you're missing that self-protection. Really, that's what that is. Um, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. if this is oh gosh, sense. absolutely. And for everyone watching, let us know what are some of your standards? What are some things that you will not tolerate in, in your love life, you know, either in your relationship or in the person you're, you're hoping to call in and meet. Right. I yeah. just, yeah, I'm so glad you started with that. I, I think feminine yeah. energy or leaning back isn't, and will never be just waiting around and letting a guy just come and go as he pleases, just letting him right. do whatever he's going to do. And then you're just sweet and understanding when he comes back. That is the exact opposite <laughs> of feminine yeah. energy, right? Such a big misconception. Yeah. Such a big misconception. Mm -hmm. And it's also, I had um, someone recently ask me like, okay, there's a guy who's interested in me. I'm trying to be in my feminine. I don't, I'm not interested in him at all. I'm not attracted to him. Should I just allow this to continue? And I was like, mm. no, it's never about that. And, and this is one of the most queen energy things you can do really like that elevated kind of, um, feminine energy is to know what you want. And it's not about being, um, critical. It's not about being mean. It's not about being rude. It's just embodying. It's really about embodying what you're worthy of too. Mm -hmm. knowing yeah. you're worthy of that. Um, yeah. So yeah, I can go love on, it. And on, on that. Point. I'm just every time I'm looking over to the side, I'm I'm just yeah. feeling you know feelings are valid. No gaslighting. Uh, yes. Gaslighting. I won't tolerate inconsistency. Love it. Thank you guys so much for yes. for that immediate feedback. I'm oh. so excited. I feel like I haven't done a live stream in a while. I love connecting with you guys. We have some great questions too that we'll get to at the end. Perfect. And yeah, it's it's not about just letting a guy do whatever he wants. In my opinion. Saying no to something that doesn't feel good to you is a very feminine energy quality, right? Very feminine energy quality. Yes. Uh, in setting that boundary and sticking to it is so important. You know, I've done lots of videos mm -hmm. about how it's one thing to to state a boundary and it's quite enough, another to like, if a man breaks your boundary or something doesn't feel good, just to keep bringing it up over and over and over. It's like, you need to yeah. set, draw that line and get yourself out of there. And that's one of the most feminine yeah. energy things you can do in my opinion. Love yeah. And loving these comments another too, thing, you guys. Um, oh, I won't tell our secrets. Yes, yeah. totally. Oh, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> um, something else too around this point is like with this person I was talking to, um, what she really wants is to be attracted to the guy that she, that she's seeing, you mm. know, and she was putting that on the back burner thinking that that wasn't feminine to have that kind of standard was her not being in her feminine. So another thing I'd love to hear from everyone is like, what are those non-negotiable things you want in relationship mm -hmm. um, that maybe you feel guilty for or like, oh, is this, is this me like being critical? And I'm here to say, no, you get to have exactly what you want. Yeah. And that's like, it's just a standard you set and then you let go. Well, we'll talk about what leaning back really is later on. But yeah. love that. You let go yeah. of the house. So yeah. it's not about just tolerating whatever not yeah yes yes uh, that delay things happening again so hopefully um, hopefully it's just on my side it's uh if it's taking me a second or two to to respond sometimes there's like a 15 second delay coming through on my end so gr yeah great questions comments. I'm loving it. So yeah, it's not about being passive. It's not about just accepting whatever it is. It's about having really strong standards, knowing what you will and will not tolerate and getting yourself out of there. If a man is showing you with his actions that he's really not able to meet those needs or standards, right? Yeah. Um, and and if you don't feel like if you don't feel good or you don't feel attracted to him, if you're not feeling the way you desire to feel, 
then again, like get yourself out of there, give yourself permission to let this go. It's something that I love that we do at the beginning of Magnetic Mastery is get really clear on what those non-negotiables are. So when it comes to dating, if you're single, like what are my non-negotiables in dating? And then in relationship, when, once I'm in a relationship or if you're already in a relationship, getting really clear on what those non-negotiables are so we can have that be the very first thing we do because that sets the tone for how things will unfold. You yeah. know, when you set that standard, life starts to respond to that. Yeah. And that's a part of triggering that magnetism. So totally. And and I think after that is is lining up your beliefs. Like, do you believe yeah. you can have that? Exactly. Do you believe that it's out there? Right. So that's what we're gonna be module doing in our training. Three. Yes, 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 yes. So I'm gonna be a guest um teacher on one of the modules. It's yes. a four module program. We're so excited. Click the link in the description to join while it's still um at the early enrollment discount. And yeah, any any other kind of misconceptions or myths or where you see women struggling with this leaning back uh, feminine yeah. energy concept? Totally. So another thing that's really similar is women feeling afraid um, to speak up and say mm -hmm. what they want, um, either if they're dating someone or they're in a new relationship or in a long term relationship. I see this in each of those phases where women are afraid that they're going to push a man away by letting him know um, how they feel, letting them know what they want. Um, and what I wanna say around that is a high quality man, the man that we all want to be with, right? The kind of man you wanna attract is actually going to be magnetized to you saying what you want because he's motivated by making you happy, right? So if he has no idea what makes you happy, he can't actually step into his fullest masculine potential with you, right? And so by you withholding, what it is you want, what it is you need, what it is you desire, you're, you're actually um, pushing him away in a sense, ironically, when you're trying not mm -hmm. to push him away by withholding that. And so um, I'm curious if that's making sense to everyone here. So true. So true. By the way, thank you for the 199. Amy, love you too. So happy to have you guys all on here. I love what you said. I think that, uh, yeah, we can be afraid that setting a boundary or, or stating what we need is going to turn a man off. But the truth is a man will fall head over heels in love with a woman who puts her own heart first. And I know that might sound a little selfish or not like what we've heard. It's yeah. so important to put your own heart first, your own needs and desires first, and not compromise that or break your own boundaries or compromise yeah, yeah. anything because you're afraid of losing this man. If you don't, if you're not, if you're afraid to speak up, if you're centered around this fear of losing a man, right? A man can feel that you're walking around with this whole vibe around you that a man can feel. And it, it does the opposite mm. of pull him in and magnetize him. It, it pushes him away. It makes him feel like you're, he's never going to lose you. He, he can treat you however he wants, right? Even if he's a good guy, if he gets the sense that you are not totally speaking your truth, being authentic, being true to who you are, putting mm -hmm. your own heart first, basically, it's his, his attraction and respect for you will start to fade pretty instantly, yeah. actually. I love that. Yeah. And I think that, um, also, there's there's two things coming to mind. Um, it would be cool if we maybe talk about like the right way to express those things. So I think a lot of women are like, well, I don't know how to how to phrase this, how to word this. So there's that um, that I think is kind of a follow up question for women. Um, but also, I want to note that the men who are going to be into you, like not expressing your needs, are not safe men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I just have, I've talked to so many women in relationships where they don't have that safety. And I want to say like, that might not be your high quality man, mm -hmm. right? Because if you find yourself in that dynamic where you're punished or he withdraws when you express what you like, that's, that's not um, what we're going for. And you get to have a guy who like just craves to give you what you want, you know? So true. But if you yeah. say it, that magnetizes him. Sure. But it's not about hiding that stuff from him, right? So true. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like pe people, it's like, this is, people are totally resonating with what you're saying, by the way, I'm getting so distracted by the chat. Yeah. This is it. a way to kind of weed out the wrong men. The right guy's going to be thrilled. He's going to love to have like a cheat sheet as to what would make you happy. And he's going to want to do that. You know, if yeah. it's just reasonable, you know, I don't think anyone in my community watching a video like this has some kind of outlandish, unreasonable request, you know, just the basic right. things. Most of the time you, you might not have to express that, but if you do, what a man does with that information is 
is is so valuable for you to know. Does he seem to care about your feelings? Does he take them into account? Does he step up and want to make you happy or not? Or does he dismiss your feelings? Does he minimize yeah. them? Does he try to uh, make you feel like you're crazy or dramatic or too needy? All of that is such good information for you to have. It, it tells you a lot about what kind of partner yeah. he's going to be, right? Totally. And and whether or not he has done his work, you know, yeah. to be a high quality man. Um, yeah. Um, do you want to move on to the next point? Yes. Love that. Thank you guys so much for your sweet comments. Everyone's loving oh, you, Chelsea. So yeah, I, this is such great information. I'm so happy to be putting this out there in the world. I think it's so needed. So yes. What, what, what do you have for us next, Chelsea? I can't wait to hear. I love it. So another one similar, um, but it's about realizing that leaning back is never about censoring your self-expression, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so part of that can be, you know, I've had multiple women tell me recently that they were afraid to, that they were, you know, dating a guy for maybe a couple weeks to a couple months. Um, and he always did the, the reaching out. Like he always called, texted. And eventually he was like, Hey, you know, I would love it if you occasionally text me or I love it. And then they immediately come to me and they're like, but I was taught to never do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and then, um, a part of this too is like over analyzing um, how they speak when they're on the phone or how to respond to his texts rather than, um, you know, being themselves and going with their gut, going with like their gut response. I had a client who was super, you know, bold and really funny. And that's totally a part of why this, this man is into her. Um, and he said something and she kind of caught herself and her natural response was going to be to say something funny. And she held it in because she was afraid maybe that was like me not being in my feminine or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the misconception I want to clarify here is that there's nothing more magnetic than you being yourself. Oh and gosh, so, so you know, take all the, t all the tips around like what feminine energy is and like how to, how to stay leaning back. Yes. But don't, um, allow that to censor who you are because that is what's magnetic. You know, you don't want to create a relationship off of some false identity <laughs> that you're pretending to have. So again, it's just like, it's, it's coming, it's coming from a good intention to want to be aware of how you respond, be aware of what you say to this man, but taking it a little bit too far to where you're not even yourself anymore. Um, so, oh my gosh, uh, can we just do a whole series of videos just on that? That is so, yeah, it's not about censoring yourself. Yeah. No, okay, so let, me, let me give you my perspective on this because I'm so curious. In my mind, when you, I love that your most authentic self is what is going to magnetize the right man to you. It just is, right? Yeah. However, a lot of women coming to you know watch my videos here on YouTube, buying some of my books or programs, they have patterns of behavior or even thoughts that are are not an expression of who they truly are. You know, who yeah. you truly are, I believe, is is trusting that things are always working out for you, right? But we can right. cover that up with layers of fear or anxiety or doubt. And then when a guy pulls away for half a day, we want to lean forward and over text him and blow up his phone. Oh. In my and, and, and then people say, well, you should just be yourself and do whatever you want. In my opinion, that's not being your true self who knows right. that knows that the right guy is going to pursue you, that you don't have to worry about it. Right. Or if you're with a great guy who knows that he's not going to risk losing you, he's not going to let you drop out of his life. Right. So right. there's a difference between being who you are and then covering that up and acting out of anxiety or insecurity yeah. or fear. Chelsea and I have an amazing yeah. video coming out soon on, on uh, three secrets to stop feeling needy and insecure yeah. and desperate and getting rid of that clingy energy. Um, I might post yeah. that one next if, if you guys are interested in that one. So yeah, it's so good. But yeah. Um, all, when you stop doing all of those things, it, you know, feelings start to come up what you're truly feeling. In my opinion, a lot of times leaning forward and over functioning is a, it, it's trying to cover up feelings, right? We feel anxious. We want to cover it up. So we reach out to a man hoping to get a response. that's going to alleviate our own anxiety, which is what it's our job to heal that. Just an yes. example. There's all different kinds of examples, oh but God. that's yeah. my take on that, Chelsea. So hopefully that was clear. Oh my God. I love everything that you said. And, and that's exactly it. And I think that that's where there's confusion because, um, 
you know, you have to, I agree, you have to do that work around. I like to use the term self-sourcing. So when you, when you're feeling anxious and you're feeling mm -hmm. insecure, when you're feeling like, Oh, I haven't heard from him. You know, you do what you need to do to not be in that insecure space and to not take an action from that insecure space, but rather source your own stability in that moment, source your own comfort in that moment, source your own pleasure in that moment. I'm all about pleasure, you know, because it's so mm -hmm. easy to take your focus off of that neediness when you're in a state of pleasure, right? And you're prioritizing that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it's like once you, because the women that were asking me that question, you know, they've been, they've been listening to a lot of this stuff. So they're not just starting out, you know, and they, they generally know not to come from a place of control and force. So it's like, once we've laid that foundation, which we are going to touch on that stuff in magnetic mastery, you know, addressing those fears and securities, um, the need to control the need to move things forward. Once you address that, it is about just relaxing, you know, it is mm -hmm. about, um, you know, reaching out to him if you feel called to like if you've been seeing each other for a while you don't have to never text him or never right and so it's just coming back into i think a balanced space with that where you realize um when you're at peace whatever your most natural self-expression is is what you get to lean on yeah. you know um but it's not like forever censoring or I think that I think this is making sense. I hope totally. <laughs> totally. I don't know page. if you can. Yeah, I don't know if you can see these comments, but completely yeah. a thousand percent resonating uh, oh. with everyone. Casey says this resonated with me so much. Um, great question from Amy. That's really on topic from what you just said. She says, I'm not comfortable truly opening up with a man unless I know he's in it. But at the same time, I recognize they can't be in it until I open up. It's an ongoing issue. What a great question, Chelsea. I'd love to hear any initial thoughts you have on that. Yeah. So I think that there are maybe um, layers of opening up. So I think it's good to be in a state of self-protection in general. And um, it's not that you're being inauthentic. It's just um, almost like there's layers that you're peeling back for him, revealing your mm -hmm. truth, revealing your depth. And I wouldn't suggest revealing your deepest, 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 most raw self until you feel really safe in the relationship. Mm -hmm. But there's ways that you can do that. You know, maybe you don't tell him your most traumatic experience you've ever experienced just yet. <laughs> you know, maybe you don't tell him all of those things until later on when there's been, when you've, you know, created that commitment and you feel really safe. So again, that's a great question because there's kind of, I see it as a balance where mm -hmm. you do want to be real. You do want to be yourself. You do want to be vulnerable, but it's like, you don't have to air your dirty laundry, you know, yeah. <laughs> on the third date or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I love it. Perfect. Yeah. Try and baby steps. How'd you feel about um, the day you just had at work? How do you feel about your plans for the weekend? How do you feel about the weather, the temperature in the room, the, um, the food you're eating, the coffee you're drinking, you know, in this moment, try opening up about really small, you know, low risk situation things rather than, you know, dumping your, your big, like a, like a vomiting all your biggest fears or, or right. dreams or whatever. If that feels too scary, baby step your way through it. So you don't activate your defenses. Right. Um, yeah, it's getting dark here. Is that a little better with the lights or not so much a little bit? I can't get these new lights. It's getting, uh, it's getting dark here earlier. So <laughs> I wasn't yeah, really prepared for that. Actually, yeah. Actually okay. So hopefully that answered your question, Amy, uh, let us know if it did, we can, we can follow up with you at the end. So yeah. this is so great, Chelsea. I'm loving everything you're saying. Is there anything else you want to say in terms of the misconceptions or do you want to move on to into some um, of the right ways to lean back? One thing I wanted to add really quick was um, something you can do is, you know, wait till he requests. Um, so on that last note, wait till he requests for you to text him to or call you to. Like if you're wondering, when is it okay for me to kind of um, be more flexible around not letting him be the only one to reach out all the time? Um, and that was just, a, I think, a tip for anyone struggling with that when they're You've, you know, you've been dating someone for a while and you're like, is it safe to like send him a quick text of something that like popped up that's in reference to a joke, an inside joke we have mm -hmm, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're wondering, like, are we at that level yet where he's invested enough? I have leaned back enough to be able to kind of be playful in that way. Um, I think just remembering that he might request that, in which case, you know, like, okay, he's asking me to call him. He's asking me to text mm -hmm. him. And you really get to trust that and not 
second guess that because again, he's leading in that moment when he says, Hey, I, I love it when you, you know, I actually had a dynamic with my husband where I would send him my love language is words of affirmation. I would send him like, we call it a love text every day. And I realized there were, there were ways in which I was leaning too far forward in our relationship. So I cut off everything that I was doing that was reaching out towards him. And then, you know, we balanced our energies in a way, but then he came back to me and he was like, I really miss those love texts that you sent me. And I was like, mm. really? I thought, I thought that was me like, you know, pulling on you or trying to, you know, get attention from you. And he was like, no, it actually reminded me of why I was working every day because I do it for you. Mm. And so it was like, there is just a beautiful way that you can express yourself and share appreciation. Um, that's not going to be needy. That's not going to push them away. Um, especially once you've been dating someone for a while. Right. So true. So, I'm so glad you said that about frequency of contact. Cause some people are so yeah. afraid to make any move and, and yeah, with the right yeah. guy, you can do whatever you want. Right. When the dynamics, you can literally, you should see all the, you know, cat photos I sent Tom <laughs> when we first started dating. Like you, it's oh, like, you can do whatever you want. I knew he was no, yeah. not going anywhere. I knew he was crazy about me. There was no like, Oh, I just yeah. text him two times in a row. Is that too much? Is he going to lose interest? Like, I, like yeah. that, those thoughts never took up any space in my mind at all, you know, where right. maybe in my past, if I had done that with other people, I would freak right. out because the dynamic wasn't right. They weren't, they weren't for me. They weren't going to stay in it for the long haul. And on some level, I kind of knew that. So I was walking right. on eggshells. It's just no way to live your life, especially long term. Yeah. Right. And again, if you're yourself, like all these things that we're saying, if you do those things and it pushes them away, let him go. Yes. Like it, that that's really, um, you can't live in fear. You can't live in that um, over analyzing space. That's really the pitfall I see is like women are so afraid. So then they're constantly in their heads. Like that's not you being in your feminine, right? Being in your body, being present, being natural, authentic, expressing yourself. That's, that's the goal. And that's really what you know, magnetic mastery um, is going to help you achieve, which I'm so excited about. Yes, oh. yes, yeah. A, a, a lot of times when women, it's of course hard to give advice for like, you know, tens of thousands <laughs> of, of women out here, you know, so just in general, you can't really go wrong by leaning back the right way, right? But once okay. you, like I said, once you're super confident, you know, this guy's crazy about you, you know, you can't shake him off of you. There is no way he's ever going anywhere. Honestly, yeah. you can do whatever you want. And so it just becomes more natural. You can just do whatever you want. Um, so I always say my work is to help women, to women get to that place. And often that starts with bringing it back to zero, stop over texting, <laughs> stop being the one to initiate every single yes. phone call, every single date or, you know, getting together yes. and getting that experience of what it feels like for a man's energy to come towards you. What does it feel like to receive from a man? Most women or a lot of women, that's a completely foreign concept. They've never experienced it. And yeah. so what happens when they start leaning back is feelings start to come up that they had been covering up by, by over-functioning and doing everything to keep this relationship going. So we can get more wow. into that. So um, good. So yeah. Good. <laughs> so, so it's, often helpful just to bring it back to zero, get the experience yeah. of what that feels like. Then when the things are really flowing and, and you know this guy's crazy about you or you know you're gonna be fine one way or the other, then right. don't feel like you have to like hold yourself back, right? So, totally. so yeah. important. Yeah. And I love that in Magnetic Mastery, we're really going into both areas. Like we're cleaning up anywhere where there's still doubts, fears, insecurities. We can kind of go into that in a second talking about maybe what is the correct way to lean back. Mm -hmm. um, I have some notes on that, but yeah, it's, you know, the thoughts that you're thinking, the beliefs that you're holding um, and, you know, the, whatever wounded patterns you're still operating from totally conflict with you being able to be magnetic. And I love how we're tying magnetic to just like authenticity, like your natural mm -hmm. state. So mm -hmm. those things are conflicting with you having this effortless experience of what you want. But we're really here to say that it, it is meant to be effortless, you know? And so, yeah, it's just unlearning those patterns of, um, you know, the, the over-functioning, the over-reaching out and, um, yeah, and then striking that balance where it's just fun and easy, you're, you're being yourself and things are just flowing. Like high quality men are coming to you or the mm -hmm. man you're in a relationship with makes that commitment you've always wanted because you finally stepped into that alignment. Um, mm -hmm. That's yeah, my totally. Yeah. And a lot of you're talking about the wounded patterns that, that, you know, a lot of people think, well, I'm just going to be myself, but it's not your true self. It's you're operating off of this subconscious pattern. It yeah. is uh, often about, you know, heal, healing childhood wounds, healing your inner child, which we're totally going to go into in magnetic mastery. That's, yeah. that's a whole module just on that. Right. Yeah. 
Oh my God. I'm so excited for that. And, yeah. and that's an offshoot of that concept of self-sourcing where it's like, we get to serve that part of you that is still asking for attention and it never got it. And so when it's not been served, you will attract people who make you feel the way you felt as a child <laughs> until you've healed that. Um, and yeah. so, I mean, it's, it's a, oh gosh, that's four, so true. yeah, it's like a four part training, but we go so deep. You guys, I, I'm just thrilled about, about offering this for you. I'm just so excited to have you <laughs> in it. Yes. Okay. So first link in the description for people just joining, uh, get it while it's still being offered half off before we get started in a couple of weeks. And yeah, we can't take, uh, you know, everybody because it, you know, we're going to, you know, Ch Chelsea's going to be working with you personally, answering all your personal questions. So am I in the module that, that I'm, I believe I'm in module two, right? So, yeah. um, uh, if you can still sign up, that means it's still available, right? Yes. We have to cap okay. it at a certain amount. We can't like we we can't keep it open forever. But if you're able yeah. to sign up, go ahead and do it, and you'll get emailed your info right away. Super excited! Yeah. Okay, let's um let's talk about some of the right ways to lean back. I'm I'm Perfect. really excited to hear everything you have to say. I'm I'm loving yeah. all of this. Me too. Yeah, we've touched on some of this, but um this this is so good. So the first one I have for us is you know, leaning back is trusting in your vision so deeply that you can let go of attachment around who, how, and when. And so again, that's a mindset piece. That's like a core belief system that you have to rewire to get to that place of trust. Because why do we lean forward? It's because we think that we have to do something to ensure the love, right? Mm, to ensure yeah. the outcome. And, mm -hmm. and I so get that, but, um, you know, and I had to, I had to heal that needy energy, um, in, in relationship and in my business and so many places in my life. And so I, I get how painful it is to be in that space and how difficult it can feel to shift that, but it is totally possible. And I guide you through a step-by-step -step process, um, that is super simple in magnetic mastery on that. But, but just going back to the point, yeah, leaning back is trusting in your vision so deeply that you really are able to stay unattached. Um, yeah, hope that's clear. <laughs> I think, oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Would love to do a whole video just on that. I'm sure that's a, you're gonna devote like, probably a whole module to just on that okay. in the training, right? Trusting mm -hmm. that if it's that like surrendering piece, right? If things don't work out in this situation, you know for sure you trust so much in your vision. And by the way, this works in business. This works in any area of your life, not just yeah. love, right? You trust totally. so much in your desire, your vision, and you know, like what your heart wants for yourself, right? Yeah. That you're, you're not like that clinging, holding on energy, trying to do stuff to make it work when yeah. it's just, when deep down, you know that it's, it's just yours. not flowing, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, or like, you know, deep down totally that um, the ultimate vision you have for yourself is meant for you and it's coming. So therefore, if the current person you're dating, it's not lining up, you're able to, you know, feel your feelings of loss if you feel that, but you're able to trust that there is someone else, you know, if it's mm -hmm. not this person, it's someone else, and, you know, in business, I've, I mean, I've done so many trainings on this with, with um, my entrepreneur clients. If it's not this client, it's another client, right? And so part of that is also really owning how worthy you are, like without mm -hmm. a shadow of a doubt, knowing that you are worthy of what you want too. And so, you know, obviously we're going to address that big time too in the course mm -hmm. in magnetic mastery. Um, and so I just had like a little note on that too. So this is also that, like you said, surrendering. So surrendering control. So that means, yeah, you know, leaning back is letting him lead, letting him make plans in general, letting him court you, letting the man move it forward. If you're in those early stages, um, because again, if you trust, then you don't feel the need to like, dip into that energy and be mm -hmm. in the masculine role. So that's how that connects there too. So um, important. So important. We want you all to get to the place where you're like, I'm so grateful that it didn't work out with that guy that I wanted mm. so bad, right? Like, I'm so grateful. If you can get that energy in your body now mm. before the your true soulmate shows up, right? Or before yeah. the business you truly want, get that energy in your body. I'm so glad it didn't work out with, you know, that last opportunity or that last guy. Um, and just be grateful for it because what you want is truly meant for you. If you have a desire for something, yeah. there is absolutely a path to it. It's right. The energy is already there. It's like, in my opinion, 99.9% .9 done. But that we tend to hold ourselves in that 0.01% forever because we we doubt it, right? We want it and yeah. we doubt it. And we keep looking back at where we were or where we are. Yeah. <laughs> 
allowing yeah. in what we want. So yeah, and we'll we talk some more about that in our training. So excited totally. for that. I Totally. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I think there's maybe a little delay. I was just going to say, you know, that's where the Oh, no, my screen just froze. Everything just... Oh. oh, no. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, no, no. It's just on my end, I think. Oh, my screen okay. just went black, but I can still okay. hear you now. So okay. everything's I fine. Can, I just freaked I out for a second. Everything. What were you saying? Um, I was just going to say that, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, part of that, um, you know, getting to that space of trust is really doing the mindset work to where you've built up evidence for how, yeah, it's actually super normal that I have X, Y, Z. So a lot of women, you know, they're struggling to believe that they can have what they want, but they're hanging around women all the time that are complaining about their relationships or, you know, they, they don't have examples of high quality men. So it's just, I think it's really understanding that your mind is constantly gathering evidence based on everything you've experienced, everything you're being exposed to daily. And so what I'm really excited about in Magnetic Mastery is creating a pattern interrupt where you really um, unplug from all of those programs going on in your mind and you, sh you consciously seek evidence for how you absolutely get to have what you want. Because when it feels like a no brainer, duh, that's when it comes, right? And I feel like you and I have talked about that a lot. Like when it's, when you're, when you're zero trying, right? You're not trying at all. And you're not in a space where it's like, oh my God, like I really want this. It's just like, oh yeah, I'm so excited to have that. It's coming. That's when you know you've Everything just froze again. Can you guys still hear us? Let us know in the chat. Okay, good. You're still there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Love that. I don't know why it keeps, I, I think it's just on my end, but everyone's totally connecting with this. Love what you're saying. Um, coaching's going great with Chelsea. Yes, everyone I've ever referred to Yay. Chelsea is like so, I so cool. <laughs> yes, okay. So, so amazing. Totally loving all of this. Everyone's really resonating with this. There's more and more people joining. So yes, make sure to uh, check out Magnetic Mastery. Just Chelsea and I teaching this mm -hmm. one. We're so excited excited. And yeah, what's the, anything else you want to share? I know you probably have yeah. so much more to say on this have, topic. Yeah, I know. Right. I have one more <laughs> note, but I would love to hear your, yours too. Um, so leaning back, you know, I touched on this a little bit, but leaning back is sourcing your own security, mm -hmm. love, satisfaction, pleasure, <laughs> you know, like one of my favorite words, um, rather than needing to get, needing to get it from him or needing to get it from a specific outcome happening. So, you know, this is another version of letting go of attachment, but how do we do that, right? So much easier said than done. Like, oh, just like try not to source, you know, don't source security from him. Don't look outside yourself. But, you know, what I really provide for women and what we're doing in Magnetic Mastery is, is how do you do that? You know, and so that's, that's self-sourcing. So this can be doing the inner child work we talked about. This can be creating a really full, rich life so that, you know, you're just having so much fun and you've taken responsibility for your own happiness so that, you know, you're not relying in a codependent way Yeah, <laughs> with the guys you're dating or with the situation, you know, the same thing when it comes to business. It's like, how can you create the feeling of stability and abundance now? Or when it comes to your career, if you want to up level in your career, how can you feel like it's already here so that you are leaning back? right? Because that's what makes you irresistible to exactly what you're wanting to create. Um, so I hope this is making sense so far. <laughs> yeah, so true. It's like, okay, yeah. So it's like, here's where you want to be over over here. Everything's backwards on these. On these yeah, I know. <laughs> and here, here's where you are over here. And it's like, it's like trying to, to close that gap with action, that, that yeah. driving forward masculine energy. I'm going to close this gap by going out and uh, making a hundred co uh, cold calls or reaching out yeah. to, you know, 50 different men. And if it, if I don't get the results I want, I'm going to feel terrible because right. I don't trust that all I need to do is prepare myself here <laughs> vibrationally, energetically, yeah, emotionally. And then what you want over here just comes to you rather than you yes. forcing it and trying to make it happen. And you might get short term results with that, but it's going to burn you out and you can't really yeah. get permanent lasting results. If that you makes can. sense. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And that's really the, the whole purpose of magnetic mastery is to get you into that space where mm -hmm. you have prepared yourself vibrationally. I like to also say emotionally because mm -hmm. your emotions um, can really help you get to that space. So like, how does it feel to have what you want already? How does it feel or how do you want to feel like in the, in that list of non-negotiables that I'm going to have you guys do at the beginning, how can you create those feelings, you know, that you want in dating, that you want in your relationship now to where, 
really you've taken the pressure off of it needing to come yeah. Yeah. at any certain point because you're so self-sourced. And then that's when it just falls into place, you know, with such ease. You know, that's what I experienced with finding my husband, which I know we did a whole video on. I won't go into it, but it's like you just you be that energy of what you're wanting. And then it's effortless. And, you know, that's what you guys deserve. And that's that's what's possible. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you're, then you're so not needing of you're so not needing yeah. of this man to do what you want in this moment. You're so not needing anything from him that he just can't help it. He's just going to be drawn right into you. Same with money. Same with everything. Um, yeah, yeah. Loving these comments. So, yeah. I wish I knew my twenties and thirties. I'm slowly learning. Yeah. I get that comment all the time. That's one of the most common question, uh, comments I get. Yeah. yeah. But never too late. I mean, gosh, you have so many, you have your whole life ahead of you. It's so great to yeah. know this now because this can happen quickly. Every oh, relationship yeah. can recover quickly. Men can turn around on a dime. Yeah. Right. Like in happen. an hour, honestly, like <laughs> yeah. I, when I really started understanding this stuff, I would pl practice with my husband and I would just, I would get into this energy. I would do all the principles we're going to teach in magnetic mastery. And uh, he, I would think to myself, like, I want to, I want to go for a picnic this weekend or whatever. And then he'll be like, do you want to go for a picnic this weekend? And I'm like, I swear to God, that was a thought <laughs> in my mind an hour later. And then I know for the longest time, I always wanted to be the couple that goes on romantic getaways. And literally like tomorrow and next weekend, we're going on two back-to-back -back getaway weekends together. Well, staycations, um, yeah. but locally. But um, yeah, it's like you once you start understanding these principles, it's just so fun. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You're like, you're such a joy to be around. So not only um, are you attractive to men, but like you just become this light in everybody's life. You know, um, when you're in this space of self-sourcing your own pleasure and satisfaction, you're leaning back, you're trusting, you know, um, th I mean, it's just, it's a joy to be around people who are in that space. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it's just, even just with dating, you could think, when are you the, your most magnetic self? When you're trusting, when you're in the moment, having fun, yes, in, totally having present in your feminine energy, or when you're up in your head, fearful, walking on eggshells, afraid to express yourself because you're worried you might say the wrong thing and push a man away. Very obvious, yeah. right? So yeah. yeah, love that. Chelsea, I'm loving all of us. I'm so sorry about the delay on my end. Hopefully no, it's, it's, all good. <laughs> it's okay. It's this happens all the time. Um, but yeah, anything else you want to say or do you want to get to some of these questions? I see some great ones in the chat. Yeah, I'm excited to go into questions. One other note I had down here is very similar, but like another way that you can self-source is just by really focusing on what you appreciate. You know, and that concept of like what you appreciate appreciates. <laughs> so, you know, you can really use that when it comes to money and abundance. But um, that that has been one of the most powerful ways that I have created the kind of relationship I want with my husband is just appreciating what I love. That's a way that you can self-source, stay leaned back, because, again, you're you're filling yourself up with what you focus on, with what feels good, what's working, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And there's no faster way to fall out of alignment than to focus on what's not working, like hyper-focusing on what's not yeah. working. So yeah. that was the last point totally. yeah. all my notes <laughs> every, yeah. I have. I was going to say, every time you appreciate something, you're just like telling the universe, like more of this, please, more yeah. of this. But it's not just a pre every time you focus on something, every time you point out what your man is not doing that you wish he would do, or every time you complain about that there are no good men out there, you're literally just attracting it. I've just seen that happen across the board. There, there's no exceptions to that, really. So what you're focusing on is what you're going to attract. And so I love that you call it a pattern interrupt to kind of like yeah. shift all of this. And it, and it can happen quickly, like we said. So, okay, mm -hmm. let's see. Um, here we go. First question. I'm just going to read them for the first time when I put them on the screen. I'm prioritizing self and self-love, but I damaged polarity, leaning forward with an ex that pursued when he was not leading the way that I wanted. We've been distant. I miss him. Can I never reach out? What, what would you say to somebody um, who's like in separation from a man, it sounds like? So what I always teach, whether it's in love or in business, you know, with entrepreneurs is get into the energy first. And yeah. if you feel inspired from the inside, not from fear, not from control, not from your head, if you feel that that um, intuitive pull to reach out, then it's okay. So when I say do the energy piece, do all the energy stuff we're talking about. If you're in alignment, like you're, you know, you're trusting, you work through your limiting beliefs, you're in that magnetic space, like everything we talked about in this video, and then you feel from an intuitive space, like I, I need to reach out to him. Trust that is what mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But don't skip all this stuff and then get into action. That's that's one of the biggest pitfalls I see 
you know, in dating and in other areas too, is you have to do the mindset work, the energy work to get into alignment. Then if you feel authentically pulled, um, you can trust that. Perfect. Yeah, that absolutely perfect. Yeah. It's like, if you do reach out and you don't get the response you're hoping for, are you going to feel devastated? Is it going to, are you going to break your own heart? You know, or, or are you, are you trying to do something is the other question I would ask yourself. Are yeah. you trying to do something or like Chelsea said, is this coming from the inside? Like does your, sometimes I think your desire, which I think comes from a feminine energy place kind of becomes the action. Like you just can't stop yourself. Like when I had that, um, you know, that impulse to go online and met Tom 24 hours later online, right? Yeah, it's like nothing could have stopped me. So yeah, is that coming from a, a desire place or a fear? If I don't reach out now, he's gonna slip away and I'm never gonna hear from him again. So yes. you could do the same action, but coming from a totally different place, get a completely different result, right? That's, it's all about where you're coming it. from. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it, totally. Love that. Okay. So Kylie says, how can I lean back when the person I love is my friend? It's been established. We have a deep love for each other. I'm confused about leaning back in a friendship. Um, I would ask, do you want more from him? Is he like, are you guys friends, but he's expressed interest and you're, you're wanting to date him? What is it you want from, from this yeah. is my initial thought, Chelsea. What do you think here? Yeah. Well, I love um, something you said earlier, like it's never too late. You know, we were just talking about, it's never too late to shift the energy. That's how, like we are all, especially as women, we are so magnetic. So even if something has been the same way for years, you can have an energy shift. You can do this work we're talking about. And um, we're not in control of how other people respond, but it's very likely you're going to get a different response from mm -hmm. this person. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not, we're not in control of whether or not he wants the same thing. All of those things would have to be addressed too. It's like, is he, is he looking for more? Like, you know, is he, is he wanting to commit a relationship? So if, if he's wanting all those things, you'll absolutely create that polarity by leaning mm -hmm. back and doing mm -hmm. this magnetic work. Um, yeah. It's never too late. Yeah. On the other hand, if he just wants to be friends, this is really important to note. And there's yeah. nothing you can do that's going to make him want, yes. like it has to come from him. It has to come from his own desire. If he just wants yes. to be friends, you, you just leaning back is not going to all of a sudden turn him into somebody who right. wants a relationship with you. So you just want to be careful with that one too. Um, fantastic question from Claire. How do I lean back while letting a man know that I'm interested? What a great question. Chelsea, any, any thoughts there? Um, I feel like that we kind of address similar, similar questions in the beginning. Um, so I definitely recommend watching the replay once this is done. Um, but yeah, it's, it's striking that balance, you know, of knowing that what leaning back really is and knowing that it's not censoring your appreciation. It's not censoring. So ways that I think you could show him you're interested would be, you know, letting him, letting him know what you are enjoying about your time together, mm -hmm. like sharing your appreciation, um, you can be warm, you can be interested, like you can be flirty. I'd love to hear what you have to say, Helena. Yeah. On this one. I think the word that's coming to me is invitation. You can be an invitation, mm -hmm. right? Um, it, really, like we said, if you're really confident, if you know that he's interested too, you can do whatever you want. You can say, you know, Hey, yeah. it would feel, you know, we, we get along too well to not spend more time together. If it's somebody that you're not dating, it's just, you know, someone you encounter in your life totally fine to say something like that and then see what he does. Mm -hmm. If he's interested, he's not going to let that opportunity go by. He's going to jump. She's going to, he's going to jump at that. If he, right. And if he's not, he won't. And then, you know, right. I don't know what the exact situation is here, but if he is coming towards you, just saying yes, responding, not, you know, yeah. thinking you wait three hours to respond, just right. respond, right? Just respond, be open, be warm, right. be yourself, be authentic. And right. if he's not, you know, if you're showing up fully and authentically like that, and he drops off and, or doesn't put that effort in, you, then, you know, right away, it's so obvious. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. Here's a question from Julia. Do you guys think it's okay to go on a first date at a guy's house when he seems nice offer to make you dinner at this time of the pandemic? I mean, there are not that many places open that we can meet. I personally wouldn't, I would say would feel good to meet at a public place the first time, maybe go on a walk, go hiking in a, on a public trail, meet at a park, something like that. What do you think, Chelsea? 100% just from a safety space. Like I think there's mm -hmm. many layers to that of why it's a good idea not to. Um, yeah. And also always trust your gut, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like he seems nice. I mean, everyone seems nice at first, right? So you just never, <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> Better okay. be safe than sorry. You know, yes. my, inner, my inner mom is coming out on that one. <gasps> yeah. Oh, it looks like everyone in the chat is giving uh, this advice. You guys are all, all experts. <laughs> love, love that. Um, Chelsea is the best. Uh, love that. Mm -hmm. Yes, totally agree. Um, okay. Let's see. Here's one from Naomi. I've let my guy do whatever he wants, not take me out, stop trying, stop pursuing. It's been going on for months. Um, a lot of it's my fault because I didn't set boundaries. How do I start finally setting boundaries? Oh, I hear about that all the time. Um, I would just, I would just start doing it. You know, how, I, it, let's see, what has he not been doing? Not taking me out, not stop, you know, rather than trying to get him to do these things, you feel that energy of like leaning forward, trying to make him do something. Just the next time he comes towards you, I don't know exactly what's going on. So it's hard to say for your specific situation. You could say something like, um, sure, that would feel great. And in order to continue this connection, you know, something that's really important to me is, is consistency or mm -hmm. setting some kind of boundary like that. Let's say he, he says he's going to call and he doesn't, or he breaks plans constantly, just letting him know like, Hey, that doesn't really feel good for you. I'm starting to question whether or not we're on the same page. And then see what he does. Does he start stepping up or not? Um, that's my initial thought. It, if you want to type in a little more, if you want to join the training, we can we can work with you. You know, around this, Chelsea. What do you think on this one? I totally agree. And one thing I would add to that is when there's been a dynamic like that established, you know, and you have feelings for him and you want it to continue, don't let the fear of losing him keep you from setting those boundaries. Mm -hmm. Like we've been saying, like you know, there's no point in trying to keep something going that is out of alignment mm -hmm. fundamentally. So just knowing that like, um, I think really before going into a conversation like that, like really self-sourcing, getting really solid in your energy, reminding yourself that it's this or something better, like mm -hmm. removing all attachment as you go into that conversation so that you remember like you're worthy of having those boundaries met. You're worthy of that and don't let that dynamic make you convince you that oh it's not normal to have these boundaries met yeah that's, that's totally right. totally yeah and um, the danger of accepting crumbs and and tolerating something like this is after a while it becomes your new normal i guess i could say yeah. it, it, you start to believe that's all you deserve or that's all that's possible it's like this yeah. devastating cycle if you're engaging with men on a certain level and accepting it you start just you start thinking this is all there is. Then you start developing beliefs like, oh, all men are yeah. flaky, right? Or, right. you know, yeah. men at a certain age don't want to commit. You just, you're just making it up based on what you're experiencing. And that causes you to want to stay even more stuck. Like if I let this go, maybe there's something, maybe nothing else better is out there. Kind of the opposite of this or something better. So you don't want to get into that cycle. Such a devastating cycle. I should make a whole video on that, um, yeah. right? We're going to go so into those limiting beliefs and fears and and release all of that in magnetic mastery, which I'm stoked on. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yes, yes. So this resonates with me so much. I'm currently in a long term relationship. Just recognizing standards are important. Yeah, a lot of times you don't really realize what's important until you live through it, and then you go, "Oh, mm -hmm. something about this doesn't feel right. I need to set a boundary," and then you see what he does, right? Okay, mm -hmm. let's see. Yes. I'm just looking for some questions here. Yeah. I don't want to miss any. Um, uh, Amy's been working on feeling statements. Awesome. She's the one that has a hard time opening up. So we're, we're um, hey, baby steps. Hey. Okay, good. I'm so glad that was helpful. Okay. Did we get to all the questions? I know I saw some more at the end. Um, yeah, Nicole. So I love how everyone's helping each other out. It's so great. Um, love it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you asked this Minnesota girl. I'm seeing a lot of young men dating coaches on YouTube in the 21st century, telling guys to let the woman initiate contact, ignore the woman they like. What do you think about this? Oh, I no. think if, a, <laughs> if a, how, it's, how do you feel? What's a man doing and how does it feel to you? If a man is ignoring you, in playing mind games and giving you mixed signals because he's trying it's like it to me this is just it, like that there's no way on earth that's gonna feel good you're too good for that anyone on my channel anyone watching this live stream way yes. too good for that you guys are all you know you, you know what you want you're not going to tolerate that so it's, it's all about how it feels to you if this is mm -hmm. something that feels okay to you then go ahead and engage with people on that level but i know that <laughs> i know that deep down there's if you don't, you know, if you're not engaging with men on that level, you're not going to keep attracting it. Kind of what I was explaining in the last question, right? Love it. 
Yeah. Okay. I'm just reading these for the first time because they're kind of small until I put them on the screen. Uh, so good. feels good to be 19, getting all this advice now, going through this process, connecting to my heart. So excited. This advice is so amazing. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yes. I get so happy when people can learn this. Like I said, even women I work with in their 30s and 40s, you know, say, what, you know, why don't they teach us in school? I wish I would have learned this a long time ago. Right. So yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much. So sweet. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm just looking for more questions. I think mm -hmm. we might've got to all of them. Did we miss yeah. anyone's questions? If we did, sometimes they just jump up to the top and yeah. Um, yeah okay. Let me says, I know I deserve more. Not used to asking for more. Thank you both. You're welcome. Oh, okay. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. <Proud of> <laughs> Yes, yes. Great advice about boundaries, trying to get out of my head, being a people pleaser. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you're accepting it, it's going to continue. You know, if you're accepting, this is my opinion. Okay. Like, I don't know if this is the way it is. This is what I've found in my own life because I was the most crumb taking person ever, like oh, a no. decade or so ago. Right. If you're taking crumbs from this guy and not sending a boundary, you're moving on. You're not only sending out that signal to him, you're kind of sending it out to the universe. Exactly. I'm okay with, this is all I can handle at a certain level. I'm totally okay being second best or not having the full meal. And then you're going to attract men on that level which is just going to cause you to gather more evidence, start developing beliefs that men are lazy. Yeah. They don't want to put in effort. Then you don't want to let go of the original guy because you think nothing else better is out there. So that's <laughs> the cycle you want to avoid at all mm -hmm. costs, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Oh, we got some more questions here. Do you have a few oh. more minutes, Chelsea? I know we're almost yeah. out of time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What do you do when he's scared of his mother and his mother hates you for life? Um. To me, I don't know anything about your situation, but um, yeah. you want a man who runs his own show, right? If this is an adult male over the age yeah. of, you know, 20 or, or something, you want a man who runs his own show, who doesn't, who, you know what I mean? Knows that you yeah. are so important to him that he's not going to like take everyone's advice into account to a level to where it's like toxic. That's what, any thoughts yeah. there, Chelsea? I agree. And also just from like tuning in and making sure that, um, it's everything that you want <laughs> yeah. because that is definitely, especially if we're talking about like lifelong partnership, that is something that you'd have to accept. Um, but as long as he has a healthy dynamic with her and is wanting to protect you and you have healthy boundaries, you know, I think it, it could work, but um, yeah, there, there, we, I think we would need to know a lot of details to get yeah. deeper, but mm -hmm. I love what you shared for her. Yeah. Okay. Lots of questions about, you know, the time we're in right now. I have a date on Saturday. How do I um, meet people during this time? How do I be feminine during yeah. a Zoom date in lockdown? Any any um, yeah. tips on how to be your most magnetic self, how to date during this time, Chelsea? Yeah. You know, I think really remembering that um, energy is everything. And, and trusting that like how you be is still going to be felt like through the interwebs. If you're long mm -hmm. distance, if you're, if you're internet dating, um, again, like that example of like, I'll think a thought and I'm in magnetic flow and then it happens an hour later or whatever. So, um, everything that we're teaching still applies. You know, I think you can still be really successful even if you're not able to be in person just yet. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. Perfect. Don't I love that. Head about it. Yeah. Don't get yeah. afraid. Yeah. yeah. It's just the next logical step, right? Um, yeah. You're on it. You're going Zoom date. Just be yourself. Just know that he's nervous too. He probably thinks this is weird and awkward. Just yeah. like you. And so you can connect with that. You go, oh my gosh, yeah. this is so, you know, I feel a little silly doing this, you know, date on Zoom. It's kind of, you know, yeah. how's your experience been? And you're actually connecting and building intimacy in the moment rather than trying to like, say the perfect thing, have this list of all these things you need to convey to him, just be in the moment, yeah. you know? And if you feel awkward, if it feels funny, laugh about that with him. That's great. It That's is definitely a, a good connection. conversation starter. Like you yeah. said, I love that. Just like yeah. be yourself and be, be open, be vulnerable, share with him what you're feeling. Totally. Yeah. Love and let that. us know how that goes for you. I would love to yeah. hear about that. Okay. One question from Ivy, how to get my fiance to be more romantic. He initiates sex in a way that doesn't feel good. I feel bad mm -hmm. saying to no to him. It's hard. He stopped being romantic, making me feel good. Any thoughts there, Chelsea? Yeah. You know, this is where you get to speak up and use your voice and share with him, like what makes you feel really, really good, you know? And I know how vulnerable that it is. I think one of the biggest reasons women don't share that stuff. Well, number one, you don't want to make him feel bad, which is, which is sweet, you know, but remembering 
a high quality man, masculine man wants to give you what you want. So mm -hmm. to really recognize that you're not actually protecting him, you're kind of harming both of you by not speaking up and sharing your truth. Um, but the other thing is, um, I forget what I was gonna say. I think it was um, like, you just get to share what makes you feel good, right? Mm -hmm. and, and knowing that, um, that's what I was gonna say. If he's not gonna, if he doesn't want to meet that, then you get to have that release of attachment to him, right? Which I know is way easier said than done, but it's one of those things. So um, they can't read our minds. They can't read our minds, you know? Mm -hmm. um, if you're not speaking up for yourself, who is? You know what I mean? Like it's really, it's a, a really big deal totally. to do that. And, and, you know, I think this is a really common thing too. So I think take any judgment or pressure off. I think I've just heard this of this dynamic so often. Um, and like, there's even moments where I've shared with my husband, like, I love it when you do this, 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 or like, I'll set a boundary of like, I, I'm not available for it that way. or I'm not available for it to start this way. And I, again, it's like, how, where's this man at in his development? Because I think that a high quality man can handle his own stuff. Mm -hmm. And again, wants to protect you, wants to make you happy, wants to please you. So if it's coming from that place of like warmth and appreciation, and not criticism, then you're you're doing it right. So. Yes, totally, totally. Yeah, I think that's amazing. Love it. Or not complaining either. Not complaining. Yeah, either. yeah. I mean, the right. Just does he want to make you happy in general? Does he want to meet your needs? Um, if he doesn't, that's something to take a look at. That's a bigger right. issue than just the sex thing, right? So Cindy right. says um, she earlier she said ran into a guy I met several years ago. I was married then. We saw each other, had a great time. He called and texted. Now I haven't heard from him for a couple of weeks. Um, did you respond to his text? Um, does he know you're available and single now? That's what I would ask. If he does know those things and you responded, you haven't heard from him for a couple of weeks, he might just not be interested. You know, the right guy is not going to um, jeopardize his opportunity to be with you. Like I always say, yeah. um, but like we mentioned, I forgot who it was at the beginning with the ex reaching out. I believe it was Mimi's question. Um, if you're not attached to the outcome, if you're going to feel great either way, and yeah. you want to say something, then hey, go for it, right? But if mm -hmm. that's going to feel terrible, if you don't get the response you were hoping for, that's a clue that you have an agenda, you're trying to make something happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's see. Um, I think it's the last one from Judith. How do I communicate my boundaries with him? Great question to end on just kind of in general. I mean, yeah. I certainly have my own ways um, that I help women communicate boundaries, stating how you feel, kind of like what Chelsea yeah. said in the last question. Um, this feels good or this would feel good. Yes. You know, I don't want, you know, I don't want to put pressure on you. I don't want to, whatever it is that you don't want. And then ask yeah. him what he thinks to ask him how you guys could work this out. So both of your needs yeah. get met. Um, I got that template from my brilliant mentor, Rory Ray, years and years mm. ago. I feel, I don't want, what do you think? And that yeah. works for all kinds of negotiations. It works so well. I did a whole video just on that or a clip from an interview. I feel, I don't want, what do you think? Yes. That's one way to do it. There's all kinds of ways though, Chelsea. Any any yeah. tip on setting boundaries? One thing that has really worked for me, at least in in my relationship, is when I'm when I know that I'm going to have kind of like a vulnerable conversation, <laughs> um, I love to lead with appreciation and and kind of say like why it's so important to me that I even have the uncomfortable conversation around boundaries. It's because like, I love you so much. Our, really, our time together means so much to me. Like if my request was around, you know, spending quality time or whatever, or request or boundaries, I feel like fall into a very similar category with this. So I, when I lead with like where it's really coming from, at least I'm speaking as someone who's married in a loving relationship, but um, it's coming from my heart space of like, I, I want a high quality relationship, you know, like I want us to be happy together. So I come from this sincere place of vulnerability and appreciation. It's almost like I, I don't think I've ever heard no. Yeah, <laughs> not that you can't yeah. say no, but like when it really is real, like it, it might not be like okay, I can do that right this second. But it's like okay, I'm going to seriously consider how I can make that happen for you. Mm -hmm. Worst mm -hmm. case scenario. So um, again, it's the come from right. No one likes to feel like they're being complained to or like they're being criticized ma masculine or feminine yeah so that's just like a good rule of thumb self-source if you're feeling that way do the self-sourcing stuff we talk about and that we're going to master in magnetic mastery um so that you can come from a place of love 
when you have a conversation, true. you know? So true. I think that's amazing. I love that you said you've never heard no when you're coming from just a real authentic place and coming from appreciation. I can say the same thing for myself as well. So yeah, yeah. the right guy is going to go, oh my gosh, of course, like they're going to be yeah. happy. They're going to be happy to know what it is that men are always just wondering how to make women happy, right? So yeah. if you give them a window into that, don't be afraid to do that, right? And right. like Chelsea said, they, they just don't want to feel like whatever they do is never enough, right? Yeah. Like they can just never do anything right. When you get into that territory, that's when like the dynamics off or the way you're communicating it is might be a little off. So totally. yeah, hopefully that was helpful. And I think that was the last question. If we missed any questions, just go ahead and put them in the comment section after this posts. And um, wait, let me just make sure I didn't miss any actually. Okay. Um, can you please, oh, okay, here's one more. Please provide an example statement we can use. Okay, so Chelsea, do you have one with your husband? Let me think if I can think of something specific. Um, do you have something that you wanted and you asked for, just like you said, and he was more than happy to do it? It worked um, out really well. No like an exact sentence, like an exact. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say um, I'm very natural about it. Again, like no, let's don't overanalyze, right? It's, it's the energy you come from. So Maybe like, um, and I like to be playful. So I'll be like, you know what I've been thinking about? And he'll be like, what? And I'll, and I'll say like, I really want to blank, blank, blank. Like, what do you think about that? Or like, so yeah, <laughs> I'll just, yeah. If, if, it, I'll, if it's casual um, or I'll be like, hey babe, um, I, I'd love to talk to you about something. Can you let me know when you'd be available? Right? So if it's a deeper, longer kind of conversation, this is a boundary he set with me and his masculine energy, which I love, where he was like, please request in advance when you want to talk about something deep and meaningful, whatever. I want to make sure that I'm in the right headspace. This is a very masculine mm -hmm. thing. Like, totally. drop a deep emotional bomb on them. And they're like, oh my God, I'm still mm -hmm. like decompressing mm -hmm. from my work day. I've made that mistake so many times in the past. Yeah. We've learned. Um, so yeah, I hope that was helpful. Yeah, um, super helpful. You know, but beyond, you you gave so many good examples already. So that was kind of just like a more casual one, but the- Yeah, the, yeah, I, I'm like, some, want, yeah, like. exactly. Um, something, something that feels good, you know, it feels so good to help, you know, it feels so good when you help me out with the groceries, when you yes. help carry this, oh my gosh, it feels totally. so good. I feel so safe and cared for, you know, yes. start with, you know, how it's not about him and what he's doing or not doing. It's about you and how it feels or how it would feel <laughs> when you get it. Right. I okay. love that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. See, Jennifer says it worked. He called in February. Now we're completely falling for each other. Oh my gosh. I've never had such a respectful relationship leaning back, giving, giving space, takes patience. I'd like to add, he respects me, wants to wait till marriage. We're making future plans now. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Wow. So there you go. So happy to hear that, Jennifer. Thank you so much for sharing. And I hear about that all the time. It just works. It's just the way it is. Right. So yeah. that was the last question. Thank you guys so much for staying all the way till the end. Chelsea, any last words you want to share on this topic or about magnetic mastery before we go? Yeah, so everything that we've talked about, um, we're gonna go so much deeper. We really just scratched the surface um, in this live stream. We're gonna go so deep in magnetic mastery. And this is really perfect. I think I wanna clarify who this is for. So it's perfect for someone who is single. There's a few different types. Um, single who is ready to attract high quality men who are available, ready for commitment. So no longer attracting men who have a lot of work they still need to do mm -hmm. or men who are non-committal or men who are unavailable or men who make them feel bad for having standards, desires, requests, boundaries, whatever. So this is for you if you're in that dating space and you're ready to attract who you, the type of man you really wanna be with, who wants exactly what you want. So. Uh, oh, everything just froze again. I know. I don't know why no, that keeps happening. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so this is perfect for a woman wanting to feel like they're magnetizing their current partner too, and also magnetizing the kind of commitment they want. Because if you've been in this dynamic of leaning forward or kind of stumbling, you know, and making those mistakes be addressed earlier on the live stream, then it could be potentially putting off a commitment that this man really wants to make to you. Mm -hmm. And so this is perfect for you if you are ready to get that full commitment or ready to have the exact type of relationship you want with your current partner too. So this is going to matter exactly what you want. Um, you know, if you're single or if you're already in a relationship, 
And then what's so cool about this, I know you and I have talked about this a lot, is we're going to be teaching principles that you can apply in every other area of your life as well. So if you've been interested in how these concepts apply to your career, your relationship with money, you've been trying to understand the law of attraction and manifestation, um, I'm, we're going to be teaching this in a way where you can absolutely apply it to those areas. And that's something that I um, am an expert in as well as helping women with achieving their desires in their careers and in their businesses. So um, yeah, this is for also just like overall experiencing that ease around what you want to create. So no longer feeling the need to chase or force things into, into um, place, but actually leaning back, <laughs> we're talking about, and um, letting things come to you and actually having them come really quickly. So I'm so excited to teach you guys how to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So great. Yeah. And it starts soon. It's right now it's half off, yeah. literally 50% off. And, um, and right. And we're just yeah. going to be starting a couple of weeks, all the dates, the time, the, the, yeah. the price, everything is in the first link and yeah. you're going to update that right when the price goes up and everything. Yes. So get in totally. now if you guys are interested we want to make it yeah. super affordable for everyone. We'd super love to work with you. Yeah, we can't we can't take like too many people like we said because we're gonna be like yeah. working with you personally um, in the Q and A and everything right during the, yeah. during the different live training. Yeah. And so, if you can't make the live trainings, you're gonna get the recordings, right? Yeah, totally. So you're gonna have lifetime access. I'll just go briefly over it. So there's gonna be four deep dive live trainings, um, and on one of those trainings, Helena's gonna be a guest teacher, and I'm super excited about that. And then you guys are going to have really fun deep dive homework as well to really practice integrate this. This isn't just like um, a skim, like scratching the surface type course, like we're going very deep. And again, we're breaking down these concepts so that they're really easy to apply and understand. Um, and you're also just going to have a ton of fun too. One of the first things we do is make sure that you're prioritizing your pleasure and living, you know, your life to the fullest. So it's just going to be awesome. And then, yeah, lifetime access, um, live Q&A at the end of each training. And then if you can't join us live, you can submit your questions in advance. Like everyone's going to be taken care of. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's a little overview. Amazing. Okay. Yes, yes. And then I guess one last question before we go. If you, do you want to recap? Because we didn't do this before. Um, Susie, a couple yeah. people joined late. Do you want to recap what we went over in terms of, I mean, just real quick, I know we're over on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in terms of the wrong and the right ways to lean back. If you have just maybe a 30 second recap, totally. that would be great. Okay, so wrong ways of leaning back. Um, thinking that it's about allowing just anything to happen. So thinking that you just have to go with the flow and have no standards, you know, no requests ever. Um, feeling afraid, leaning back is not, you know, withholding, um, what it is that you want from a man and what it is that you need. A high quality man will want to give it to you, right? It's not pushing him away to express yourself. Um, also, you know, leaning back is not censoring who you really are. So if you're shy, let yourself be shy. If you're outspoken, be outspoken. It's not about censoring your authentic expression because that's okay. what's most magnetic. Mm -hmm. And then this is about getting out of your head you know, out of the analyzing and just being yourself. Um, and then, you know, leaning back is trusting in your vision so deeply that you let go of who, how, and when it's going to unfold, right? And we're going to build that in magnetic mastery, that trust. Um, surrendering control is leaning back. Um, leaning back is sourcing your own love, security, stability, so that you're not needing it and reaching constantly to get it from him or to get it from a certain outcome. So that's like the epitome of becoming magnetic and le in leaning back, right? Um, yeah, that was maybe a little more than 30 seconds. <laughs> yes, no, beautiful. I think it's perfect. And then just, yes, in, um, Casey has a question if, she, if we would recommend this for her. I've been in a long-term relationship, a beautiful daughter with my partner. We're definitely in the dating phase and I feel this would be beneficial. Would you recommend this for me? She says, yeah. I definitely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's what's so cool about this is that um, you can apply it if you're single, wanting to call in the love you want. And I mean, I apply these principles daily in my marriage. We just celebrated our five year wedding anniversary, and our relationship gets better and better. Our lifestyle gets better and better. So these are principles that are going to serve you in your relationship vision for life and also serve you, you know, in the kind of house you want to manifest, you know, in the mm -hmm. career or what, anything. So yeah. I'm so excited to have you if you feel called.
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So go check it out. Get joined while it's still half off. And yeah. all the information is just in that first link. You can just learn all about it. And thank you so much, Chelsea. This was amazing. Thanks for staying a little over. Hopefully it wasn't too weird with the delay. I'm about to find out after I post it. But thank you yeah. guys for sticking with us all until the end. Yes, we love you. Feel free to give this video a like. Leave us a comment down below if we, you know, if you have any more questions for us or if you're watching mm -hmm. the replay of this. And we hope to see you very soon in Magnetic Mastery. Chelsea, thank you so much again. This is amazing. Thank you. I loved it. See you guys soon. Bye. <laughs>